Right, so if you've been following, you know that a ransomware named WannaCry has been causing havoc all over the world. But there's good news. A security researcher who goes by the name of MalwareTech on Twitter has accidentally discovered how to put an end to it, at least temporarily. So in this video, we're going to go in depth and discover how that's possible. But before we get into the nitty gritty, here is the layman version of the explanation. So it turns out this particular ransomware has a pre-written hard-coded web address which it checks before actually activating the payload. Why does it do that? Well, possibly because it wants to evade detection or analysis, but in this case, this trick kind of backfired on the cybercriminal authors. When MalwareTech decided to buy the domain associated with the ransomware and register it, the payload stopped activating, halting the spread of the ransomware. Is this a full-scale solution? No. Does that mean I'm safe now and I can ditch my backups? Hell no. It just means you've got a breather so that you can check those backups and make sure they're working. Now let's get our hands dirty. First, I grab the dropper version of the file, which is currently detected by 51 out of 61 engines on virus total. Kind of expected after the widespread panic that this ransomware has caused. I mean, everyday users know about it, so obviously the AV companies would too. Surprisingly, not 10 of them. The method we're using is known as static analysis. I have loaded the file in a disassembler called Ida Pro by Hexrays, but multiple tools can do the job. Usually the first step in static analysis is to take a look at the strings using both ASCII and Unicode conversions. So we're going to do that. Now if we start from the beginning, it has a lot of generic strings which are very common with ransomware. We have crypt gen random, general process strings, some references to different Windows components. But if we scroll to the very bottom, You can see that we have a URL over here, which is very unusual. By the way, this is the executable it uses as a startup item. But let's focus our attention back on this interesting string. So now I'm going to attempt to locate the string in the actual execution process and see if we can deduce anything from that. So we go back to Ida View and we scroll to the top. And there you have it. There is a reference to some URL. So I'm just going to go into text view. All right, now let's try to discern what this machine code means. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, this is assembly language, which is how the machine or the processor understands different commands and requests. This is the opcode or the operation that is going to be performed. For example, push means pushing a certain value into a register. Registers are the basic storage elements of a CPU. This is based on the Intel 8086 architecture. As you can see, uh, we have a move command to the register ESI, which is mainly used for string operations, with an offset, which can be translated to this value. If we follow the execution, we can see that we have some calls to Internet Open A, Internet Open URL A, and then the handles being closed. So it seems the program is trying to access a certain URL. Now if we see what happens after the URL is accessed, we have a jump. So this is an instruction based on a previous comparison, and if the result is zero, it does something. If the result is non-zero, it does something else. In this case, it's going to jump to the provided address if the value is not zero. Now if we take a look at the address, it's location underscore 4081 BC. So let's see if we can locate that here. So we have B5, remember this is hexadecimal, we have 4081 BC over here. So it seems this is an alternate segment, different sequences of close handles, and uh, that probably determines how the program is going to behave afterwards. You can also notice that there is a call to a different subroutine or a different part of the program just after that. So from all this information, you can discern that whether or not this URL can be opened would have some kind of effect on the execution of the program. Credit where it is due, MalwareTechBlog decided to go ahead and register this hard-coded domain 
and sinkhole it. I think he claims to have done it by accident, but that actually worked and the ransomware stopped infecting systems after that. Now you could also figure this out by using breakpoints, so for example we could use a breakpoint after one part of the program and see what happens when we execute it, but that's kind of unnecessary since we already know the result. So that's how you kill WannaCry ransomware. Thank you for watching, this is Leo from the PC Security Channel, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.